Today's video, I'm going to go over the basic install of my GrillWatt 48 volt inverters. And these inverters are running in split phase meaning they can output 240 volts. Each inverter does 120 volts, combining for 240. And what I'll be going over is how these are all connected, the wiring from how it comes in and how power goes out and how the data is connected. Future videos, I can get into more detailed functions like the controls and the settings, but to keep this video a reasonable amount of time, I'm going to go over the basics of the install for now and then in a future video we can get into more details. So to get started I'll show you that they're very easy to hang. It's a matter of just two screws and you just hook it up almost like you're hanging a picture. Very simple. Uh, you can see that I chose to use a backer board and on that backer board is the plywood that's actually setting up the base of the stand. This was all installed in a shed and that's because this is all portable nothing's permanently attached to my house or residence and this is so I can utilize this for a variety of different uses so I built this wood frame on the inside of this shed which gives some rigidity and makes it a good solid foundation to actually mount everything so the plywood is inside the shed with the backer board and these inverters are then mounted onto the backer board and the plywood. So I did that because it just gives a little extra protection from heat, you know, possibly even a fire. This is probably a good time to mention that I am not an electrician. I'm just a guy that likes to learn how to do things and do them myself. And I'm going to show you how I did these. If you have any questions or concerns, or don't feel comfortable doing this then you probably should not but since I like to just jump in and learn and do projects I'm showing you how I did this so the first thing you'll need to do is remove there's four screws one two and then two underneath so we're just going to remove those screws to access this panel and remove it so we can get to where all the wiring is okay so I removed three screws this is the last the fourth screw panel door just comes off like that and after that's done you can see here is access to where you can connect all the different wires that you have for this unit so when you first put this unit on obviously there will not be any wires here you will mount it just with a couple of screws and you'll hang it down there and then there's another screw location under here see in the very back there you can see that one right there and so once you hang these units on, you will tap these screws in to completely make this a solid mount where it won't come off. These units require a little bit of space on the sides of them and above and below for heat dissipation. So these particular inverters call for 20 centimeters of space on the sides and 50 centimeters of space above and below the units. So when I decided on this particular size of shed and how I was going to mount these all up, I kept that in mind to make sure that I had adequate spacing for heat dissipation and cooling. So make sure that you think about that before you start building your design of how you're going to mount these. All right, guys, so starting connections. Um, what I'll say first off is I'll do a future video that will get into peripherals such as where you're solar comes in from your solar panels and your batteries and how this is all wired and connected I'll get into some future videos that have greater detail on how those connect but for now to stay focused on inverters we will start by saying that you'll have your incoming power from your solar panels and it will come into your inverters I have two inverters so everything I show on this one is also going to be done on this one. So I'll just stick with one inverter to show you all the way through, but you would basically do the same thing on each inverter as I'm showing you here. 
So first off, you have to have your solar power coming in. And on this particular model of inverter, you can see the solar comes in right here. The wiring that I used on these was above and beyond the spec wire that is needed. I just did that to be extra safe, but you can follow your actual instructions and specifications that are provided in your manual that comes with your inverters. You may be using different inverters in mine or they may have different capabilities. So make sure that you're looking at your actual manual to see what wire you need, the thickness of the wire, the gauge of the wire. In this case, my solar wires are running on Timco's 10 gauge wire. It provided everything that I needed for my particular setup. And so that's what these are. The purpose of the tape, and you'll see that in a few different spots, is instead of ordering separate wires for each color, for your neutral, for your hot, and for your ground, you can use tape and wrap it at least six inches on your wire to designate what that represents that particular wire for. And that's more cost effective. You could definitely order the different color wires if you wanted to do that, but I just ordered bigger spools in bulk for a better pricing, and then just the color tape to designate what these wires are. So with that said, first you have your positive and your negative when it comes to the DC wire input for your inverter. So those are gonna be marked here. You got a positive and a negative, and those plug in there. Red's positive, black's negative. The same thing goes for the battery. So you can see my whole battery set up here. It all runs through, but eventually it gets up to where it connects, and I'm using its two gauge welding cable. Now, you don't need to use that thick of a gauge, but again, I went overboard just because I'd rather have the wires not be an issue. In the future, if I upgrade to more power or bigger units or whatever, some of the wiring I've already cut and I've already decided to use can just be plug and play switched around. So it's the same thing. You'll see there's a positive and a negative. So that's your DC power in for these inverters. You've got your solar panel power coming in, your PV power, and you've got your battery power coming in. Now, those connections also serve as a way for this inverter to power back to the batteries with the solar charger. So what this inverter will do is it will take all the power coming from these solar panels and it will distribute that power to whatever you're using, your output power, and it will also distribute power as needed back to the batteries to charge those. On this other side, you'll actually have your AC power. So this side has your DC power this side has your AC power. Your AC power, you can have an input and an output. And the way these are designed is you've got your input on this side and your output is further back on the back side. Now, it is a little difficult to get the wiring in when you're using thicker gauge wire than is actually required. But again, I'd rather use thicker wire and be on the safe side and build in a possibility of upgrading without having to recut new wires if I ever went to a bigger system. So my wiring coming in from AC is actually done with a high quality extension cord that's not sitting out in the sun. And this extension cord is a 12 gauge because that's more than enough for the amperage that I need to power one of these inverters. And the 12 gauge extension cord is plugged into a outlet in my house. The purpose of plugging this in is simply to allow a way to recharge my system if there's no sun out for a couple of days or if my batteries get depleted. It's a way of providing backup power. I have this set where I'm not really using the AC power for anything, but I connected it for one to provide power if I really need it. And two, I utilize this for my grounding system to go back to the main panel. And this is important because there's several different ways of going about doing this, but the whole purpose of it all is you want a ground that is grounded in one place. So your home already has a ground, and if you're doing this here at a home or a residence, you can go ahead and connect and use the ground that's already in place in your home. That way you don't have two different grounding spots, you don't have ground loops, you don't have ground interference, you don't have any issues like that. 
So that was the other reason that I wanted to make sure I have AC hooked up. So your AC input, which connects all the way back to your main house panel and your house's ground rod, is right here in the front. And you've got your neutral, your hot, and your ground. And those are designated, as always, with your green for ground, white for neutral, and your black is for hot. Typically with home wiring, if you were on 240 instead of 120, you'd have two hots. One would be black, the other would be red. This is off of a 120 leg, so it just has three wires. In the back, you've got the same thing. There's There's been several issues with the grow watt inverters on this particular model and the newer models I believe they've addressed and fixed this but there's a ground neutral bond relay issue and what that issue is is when you're on AC power the inverter sees the ground back at the main panel of your home and you are grounded correctly but when the inverter switch over to power coming from your solar and from your battery you end up having an issue where your ground is not grounded back to the main panel. And you can wire it for one way or wire it for another way, but when it goes on and off from AC power to your solar power and battery power, your ground will continue to change. And that could pose an issue for you, especially if you have a like GFCI outlets and other things like that. So to make this work, we're jumping a neutral from the input and the output so even without a relay the ground and the neutral always see their way all the way back to the panel regardless of whether this is running on AC or running on your solar and your battery power so that's what this extra neutral is this extra neutral ties in to you can see right here I've got two neutrals and those two neutrals are because one of these neutrals jumps from the AC input to my panel box which is then connected to my AC output of the inverter and what that does is it makes it so the neutral is always present regardless of whether your inverters are in AC mode or if they're in solar and battery mode so that's why this is the way that it is. So you've got your wires coming in for AC input and your wires further back wired the same way for AC output. Now those wires are wired within a flexible electrical conduit. So I've got six gauge, which is for my hot and my neutral, eight gauge for my ground, and that is how I run my wire through this conduit and it ties in to my panel. I will do a future video on how my panel is actually wired, but I can tell you that I've got two different lines coming in, one from each inverter, and each conduit has its own hot, ground, and neutral. So just as there's a set coming from there, there's also a set coming from here. So that shows you how the power comes into your unit and how the power comes out of your unit. A couple additional things that are important for these inverters is these communication cables. The purpose of these communication cables are to program these inverters and allow them to run in split phase. And split phase is what allows you to have 240 instead of only 120 come out of these inverters. So these cables are wired. This outside goes to the outside and the inside goes to the inside. These inverters have actually been working very well for me but in the beginning when I first did the install and the wiring I was running into two main issues. One of which was the neutral jump wire to fix the grounding issue, the neutral bond issue. And the other is you can't actually plug in your power Again, I'm going to remind you that this is a portable temporary setup. It's not hardwired into the actual house in which you would need your permits. So to provide 
temporary power to this to allow it to run and to charge. I am plugged into the house power via protected cords, which are high quality extension cords. They're bringing power in. And when doing so, you cannot plug these into GFCI outlets. And the reason for that is there's an issue with how those work with the neutral and that issue causes your inverters to go into a fault mode. So when you're wiring these up and you wanna bring in power from the house as your backup power to allow it to run if there's no solar, if there's no battery power, and to charge the batteries and those types of things, you have to do two things to make sure that this system runs correctly and is safe. In my experience, again, I'm not an electrician, but one was I had to be plugged in to an outlet that is not a GFCI outlet. Another thing that I kept in mind is I wanted to be plugged into a 20 amp circuit, not a 15 amp circuit. A 20 amp circuit is designed to be able to carry more amperage. So I connected two different plugs on two different legs of the electrical box. Basically what that means is you have two different sets of power inputs coming into your main panel. You got, as they would say, you have two legs. Each leg has 120 volts, just as each one of these inverters will power 120 volts. So to provide AC power to these, you have to have 120 volts coming from one leg of your main house power and 120 volts coming from the other leg. So you'll have to do a little bit of experimenting and figuring out which circuits are on which legs in your house to know where you want to tap into power. So what I've done is I've got one leg, 120 volts, powering one on a 20 amp circuit. And I've got the other leg on a 20 amp circuit. I'm plugged into that one powering this one, both prior to any GFCI connections. You don't want to be on the GFCI connection because it creates an issue with your neutral. So with that said, that's how you do these. You have your neutral jump to bypass when this switch modes. I believe they fix this problem with inverters that they're coming out with now. But if you have an inverter that that problem is not addressed yet and you don't want to get into a relay and some of them they've taken out the functionality of actually adding in a relay. You can see on the circuit board right here, there's a spot that you can plug in little circuitry which would allow you to run a relay. A relay would allow you to switch your connection depending on if you're on the inverter's AC input power or if you're on the battery and solar power. But what they've done is they've taken out the relay capability in some models and in some models I believe they're actually addressing and fixing this neutral bond issue. But for now, here's how you fix it. And lastly, you'll see I have here, which is an actual Wi-Fi dongle. And what this does, this allows me to access information via an app or a website browser to see what's going on with my inverter. Information that you can see is here. There's gonna be a subset of this information that's actually available on the app. So you don't have to come out and see what the state of something is with your inverter. You can just pull it up on the app and take a look at it and always know what's going on. Other than that, you've got your basics of your functions, which I can go into those in greater detail, as I said, in a future video. And that's about it as far as how to wire these in.